Gaining confidence doesn't have to be a really complicated process. Actually, it doesn't have to even be a long process. Despite popular belief, it does not take years and years and years to become a confident person. It does not take having an amazing business exit or thriving relationship or accomplishing really anything outside yourself to become a confident person. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how to become an exponentially more confident person in one day. Now, that day, if you're up for it, is going to be very, very, very powerful. The reason it's going to be powerful is because it's going to put you through a similar process that someone might go through in five or 10 years, because in that five or 10 years journey, five or 10 year journey to becoming a self-confident person, whether that be through traveling around the world and finding themselves and discovering their purpose and meeting like-minded people, et cetera, et cetera, that results in a confident person, What's actually happening in that process is when someone finds themselves, what they are doing is releasing the need for approval from outside people, from outside stimulus, right? They're releasing the need for approval from anything from the outside because they start to approve of themselves on the inside. If we can mimic that, if we can mimic those moments that happen that really help someone release over and over and over again the need for approval, and we can do that in a really, really short amount of time, I'm guessing you probably wanna do it. Well, I wanna share with you today an event in my life where I released more need for approval than probably any other event in my life. And that was an event where I stood up, took my clothes off, walked over, and by the way, this room was cold, okay, naked and cold, walked over to this little brown wooden chair, sat down on it, cold chair, no clothes. And I sat there in front of a room full of people for three hours in a very unflattering pose. And I let people basically dissect my shape with their eyes and a, a piece of charcoal in their hands. So I sat there and I did nude modeling. I sat there and sat there for three hours. And the whole reason I sat there is because personally, my one of my professional endeavors in the world is speaking. I believe that we can share a message further, faster, more efficiently when we're a public speaker. Whether that be through TEDx talks or paid speaking gigs or not paid speaking gigs, whatever it is, I believe the spoken word is the most powerful way to convey a message at scale, right? So being a speaker. And so I also believe, and you might share this belief if you're someone who identifies as being a speaker or an aspiring speaker, is we have a duty to be as present and comfortable and authentic on stage as humanly possible so that this message, the speaking that we're doing, can flow through us like a big open vessel, right? I wanna be an open vessel for the beauty of the infinite intelligence to flow through me on stage. I don't wanna be on stage bunging up the experience, bunging up the message or, or holding back the message in any sort because I'm anxious or nervous or feeling anxiety or feel imposter syndrome, whatever it might be. So I believe, and I'm guessing you probably share this belief, that the more present, confident, authentic we can be as speakers, the more clearly this beautiful message that is far bigger than us can come through on stage. Rather than worrying about what people are gonna think, worrying what words we're gonna say, if we can get on stage and feel completely confident, it's a beautiful thing for not only for us, but for our audience as well, because that message is gonna flow through. So, nude modeling, why does it matter? Nude modeling for me was a massive edge. In middle school, maybe like 12, 13, you know, hitting puberty and stuff like that as a boy, I'm uncircumcised, and that was something that I was shamed for in middle school, right? Most of the boys were circumcised, so in the locker room, you know, me and like a handful of, of other guys weren't, and they, it was almost created these like two separate size, like sides, right? They'd make fun of the guys who were uncircumcised because there were just weren't as many of us. So that created a lot of like, I guess you'd call them body shame issues for myself and unfortunately for my classmates as well. L luckily, now fast forward to I'm 40, and it just seems to be the women that I dated before now being a, a long-term monogamous relationship and now in this long-term monogamous relationship much prefer someone who hasn't been cut earlier in their life. But this, this video is not being about circumcised or uncircumcised. This is about that just something that was very real for me was a shame that I had about my penis. And sitting in front of a whole group of strangers who are not only going to see my penis, but they're gonna see it when I'm freezing and sitting in front of, on this cold chair at the front of the room and they're drawing me with charcoal was a massive edge for me, right? And the reason I tell that whole story is because 
everyone has their own edge. For me, being naked in front of a whole bunch of people is an edge. So whatever your edge is, that can be the most powerful, quickest breakthrough point to becoming a more confident person. When we can go into our shadows, our shames, our insecurities and bring light to those insecurities and shadows and shames, they become securities, they become light filled. They don't become shameful, they become accepted. So that's what nude modeling did for me, was push me to an edge where I would be working through a shame, working through a shadow, working through an insecurity, doing it all at the same time. And that's the type of work that most people do when they're doing like a week long personal development course, right? Or they're going to Tony Robbins, unleash the power within or something, whatever they might, they might be doing, they're working through blocks. They're working through things that have held them back, that have held them down for years and years and years. I also did a course called Hoffman. It's like a week long personal development course in Northern California, absolutely amazing. And in that, you're working through a whole bunch of stuff that has held you back in the past. So the cool thing is nude modeling doesn't actually cost you anything to do. They actually paid me. I remember the check. I don't even know if I cashed it. I just thought it was the funniest check ever. I think I got like $40 for standing naked in front of a room. And I thought it was amazing that I was getting paid to work through my shame. I wasn't there because I wanted to be painted, you know, or charcoaled naked. I was there to, for me, to serve me. And they were paying me to serve me. So my question to you right now is this, what is an edge for you? What is an edge for you? What is something that would make you feel completely uncomfortable, right? Because real confidence, when you really think about it, confidence isn't in itself a feeling. Sure, you might feel prideful, you might feel comfortable, but the real, the most confident people that I know anyways, are the ones that can walk into any situation and not feel discomfort. Confidence in my mind is, is less of an actual feeling itself, more of a lack of feelings or emotions. It's more of a lack of anxiety. It's a lack of, of worry. It's a lack of imposter syndrome or worrying what someone else is gonna think. It's a lack of an emotional experience is what in my mind confidence is. I don't know if you've heard of this, this Zen story. There's this Zen master, he's got a bunch of students and they're gonna have, I think they're gonna go meet some really important people in the world. And this Zen master is there and he's waiting in line. He's waiting there for the important people to show up. He's gonna shake their hands. And he looks down and he realizes that his palms are sweating, a sign of anxiety and nervousness, right? He realizes his palms are sweating. And right in that moment, he decides that he's not fit to be a master anymore. He lets go of all of his students. He becomes a student himself. And then it's like eight or 10 or 20 years later, he becomes enlightened. And so what the sweaty palms were was a sign that his body, his being, his nervous system was experiencing something that indicated that he believed in superiority and inferiority, right? He worried what other people were gonna think of him or you know, what this important person was gonna think of him and then that he would do the right job, et cetera, et cetera, right? And so he removed himself from a stature of master and became a student again so he could get rid of that experience. And that's what I'm saying is like true confidence is regardless of who you're about to shake hands with, whether they're important, whether you deem them as not important, you and your being don't have a reaction either way. That's genuine confidence. And when we can have that type of confidence or AKA that type of lack of nervousness, anxiety, worry, et cetera, on stage, that's true confidence. That's true presence. That's when our message can come through us in a really, really powerful way. What is an edge for you? For me, it was being naked in front of a room full of people. For you, it might be something different. And like I said at the beginning, we can work through years and years and years of shame and guilt fast if we want. I'm not saying it's easy, but I am saying it's simple. Nude modeling was not easy, especially because they didn't tell me that I was supposed to bring a robe that I could disrobe and then sit down. And then during the breaks, I could just put my robe on and walk around the room. So during the breaks in that those three hours, I didn't have a robe and they were like, they were asking me, where's your robe? I'm like, what are you talking about? I didn't get an email, I didn't get a memo about a robe. And they're like, all right, well, walk around naked, I guess. Or they say, you can put your boxers on if you want. And I was like, that's not what I'm here for. I didn't tell them this, but I remember thinking, that's not what I'm here for. I'm here to work through <laughs> the issues. So on the breaks, which there are numerous through these three hours, I would just stand there and I found when I was talking to someone, by the way, I'm butt naked, they're fully clothed talking to someone, I would even feel myself like starting to like turn my body away. So I'd force myself to turn it toward them, stand completely square to them, naked, hands by my side, 
and chat with them like this. Experiencing all of those emotions, those anxieties, those worries, those fears. Are they gonna judge me? Do I look awkward? I feel incredibly uncomfortable, et cetera. Going through those things. And the cool thing is on the other side of that experience is a dropping of the anxiety. The anxiety is not gonna stay there forever. At some point, my nervous system realizes it's not actually in under threat. My nervous system realizes that I'm actually safe. And I just breathe deep, smile, wiggle my toes, the same things that I do when I get on stage to do a talk, to bring me into my body, to bring me presence. I can do those in any situation that I'm feeling some nervousness or anxiety and allowing that those uncomfortable feelings to dissipate. And in doing that, I start to become more and more present in any situation. If I can be comfortable standing butt naked face to face with someone having a casual conversation about the weather, then I'm going to feel exponentially more comfortable on stage, fully clothed in an outfit that I picked, talking about something I know what I'm talking about, even if it's in front of an amazing uh, or in front of a huge group of people. If you can sit there naked on a cold bench or a cold chair for like three hours in front of a whole bunch of people that don't, you don't even know and feel comfortable and confident in that, then of course you can stand on stage with a beautiful outfit on in front of a whole bunch of people that actually want to hear your message. So what I'd encourage you to do is figure out what is an inch for you? You might not be standing naked in front of people. What is an edge for you? What, what is something that you can do to push yourself into that edge, to lean into that edge, to lean into your own authenticity, to lean into your shadows, your shames, your guilts, your fears, whatever it might be, sit in them, swim in them, rather than running from them and trying to mask them with, I'm good enough or whatever it might be. And the more comfortable you get in those situations, the more comfortable you'll get on stage as a speaker, the more your message will be able, will be able to flow through you. Like you're just like this clean and really beautiful vessel. Like in the Eckhart Tolle's book, A New Earth, he says, he's quoting someone else, but he says, I am the hole in the flute that the Christ's breath moves through. That's what you are. You are here to bring beauty into the world. You are not the whole flute. You're not the person blown into the flute. You're the whole. And it's our job to just like open up and let this thing flow through us as much as possible as speakers. So hope you enjoyed this message. If you did, make sure to click the like button, just throw a comment below as to what you think would be your edge. Maybe declare it right now. An edge for me would be going to Starbucks and just laying down in the lineup for one minute and then getting up and ordering an orange mocha frappuccino, something like that. Or my edge would be wearing a tutu all day downtown in New York City. You'd actually probably fit in really well there, right? Or it would be going to my parents and telling them that I'm a conspiracy theorist and wait, wait, that's me. So I'll leave it to you. Write down in the comments what's an edge for you. Make sure to click like, subscribe to this video for more videos on how to become a confident, authentic, highly paid speaker. And I'll see you in the next video.